Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Portsmouth. And, right, we've got quite a lot of stuff to get through in today's episode, so I'm going to try and make this relatively quick. Although, we've got plenty of time, I just know that we've got plenty of things to talk about. So, first thing I wanted to talk about is, on Saturday, yeah, Saturday night, there was a slight error with scheduling on some of my on one of my videos for some reason. Um, I must have pl clicked the wrong button. It basically meant that on Saturday, Portsmouth episodes 29 and 30 went out, but 30, uh, they went out at the same time, even though 30 was supposed to go out on Sunday. Um, but 30 didn't have any descriptions or thumbnails or anything like that. Um, I managed to take it down really quickly, so I didn't get sent out in an email or anything like that for those of you that use that system. But I think some of you did see it on Saturday night. Um, I then managed to sort everything out and go for Sunday. The problem is when it was posted on Sunday, because it had already been published, YouTube then didn't send out all the alerts for it, which is a pain in the ass. But so, yeah, that's where it was. So it did go out. It's just that YouTube didn't do that because it had already been published and I had to set it back to private. And then, yeah, so it didn't work very well. So apologies for that, guys. Um, hopefully you have all caught up and seen that episode now and obviously enjoyed the last couple of episodes, which have been pretty dense. Um, so, yeah, there is that. Um, second thing is someone wanted to see the finances of the club, and uh, I thought I'd do that now. Let's take a little look at some of the sort of uh, financial situation we're in. Um, this is more of a summary here, so I just thought I'd take a little look. So, as a result of us being in the championship now, we have um, got a few... Well, I don't think we've got any new sponsors per se, but we do have... Um, <laughs> we're in a lot of, well we're in 12.5 million pounds worth of debt and we're paying that off for the next ooh, a while shall we say um so yeah we've got plenty of sponsors not like huge amounts of money coming in from those sponsors that's for sure but some red here but the, the way i look at it is this um obviously we got money from coming where we were and we got money for tv right so let's just take a look at our projections it does look relatively decent like things look quite good for the uh sort of the coming years if that makes sense um we're well under our wage budget and i intend to keep it that way basically um uh, because we may need this money at a later date uh income obviously is going to be spiking quite vigorously with all the uh sorry i'm not particularly great at the finance stuff so me explaining this is probably going to be a little bit lost on many people because i don't really understand most of it myself um so if you are interested though these are the uh expenditure stats for the team at the moment basically um so yeah there is that i'm sorry i'm terrible at explaining this particular type of thing um it's not really it's more of a visual thing than an explainable thing so yeah that's basically that um right it's been a bit of a frustrating summer because obviously we are in a bit of uh, financial well not financial trouble but like we're not exactly running on a large budget let's say um so i've been trying to keep things very very i don't think i've actually spent a penny in terms of actual transfer fees yet and i may not actually do so at all um so if you recall at the end of last season i said that uh, a couple of players said that they wanted to leave the club and join larger sides either uh, i think they Nicholson wanted to join brentford no Brent, not brentford watford and uh, jack watmore wanted to join reading who'd just been promoted to the premier league and i basically told them both Give me another season, we'll get promoted, which of course we have, and we're using a lot of the youth players. We'll bring in a lot of the, we've got some great youth players and we're going to see them. So then after we got promoted, about a month later, I got a load of players, including people like Watmore especially, coming to me saying, you've lied to me, you didn't play any youth players. What? Are you kidding me? Like, half of our team is youth players. Look, we, we got through that playoff game by playing people like Daniel Daniels, a youth player, and Kieran Griffiths, a youth player, and Jack Watmore, a youth player. You yourself, sir, are a youth player. Alex Bass in goal. Um, so I'm not really sure what the hell he's on about. So that was annoying. And then, as a result of that, the entire team got on my back because I wouldn't let him leave and all this kind of bullshit, even though I never said I wouldn't let him leave. I mean, I haven't now, and he is now happy to stay. It was just really irritating because it r destroyed the morale of the team, even though we'd just been promoted to the championship. So that's a bit of a pain in the ass there. But things have now settled down. Um, we are going to take a little look at the transfers. And there's been... We do have a game today as well, remember. We've got, uh, we're got we playing Sheffield Wednesday. Um, so we're going to have a little look here. There's some more that I need to talk about. But basically, um, I've not spent a single penny because we really, really needed to save some money. So players have gone out. Daniel Daniels has gone out on loan uh, to Wrexham because I just figured he needed some first-team football and my coach reckoned it was vital. We've also got a new assistant manager and you're going to like who that is. Uh, in fact, I'm going to just tell you now. It's Sylvain Distan. Um, a lot of the staff's 
contracts were coming to an end and I decided to let a lot of them expire so I could bring in some of my own that I could choose and I chose Sylvan Distan as um, my assistant because he has an incredible tactical knowledge and that's kind of what I really wanted in an assistant because I'm going to allow him to take over things like um, opposition instructions because apparently sometimes it's best to, if they've got more than 15 on tactical knowledge and tactics and stuff sometimes it's good to let them do that and he has 19 and 17 on those stats respectively his scouting ability is terrible but that's fine because we have scouts for that so I just won't trust his opinion on player potential uh, so other players out Charles DeSells Andy Bartram Curtis Obang Danny East Bark Hazen Butler and James Dunn the main reason I got rid of these guys is because some of them actually were on some quite decent wages and I needed to try and free up some money also DeSells was getting on a bit Andy Bartram was getting pushed down the pecking order by the players Obang maybe we could have done with keeping him but both East and Butler just weren't good enough and that's an area we are going to have to strengthen in at some point I'm still looking to get another fullback in Bark Hazen again was just constantly complaining despite being a backup and so I just got rid of him. You know, you want to play, go elsewhere. You weren't going to get my team. And James Dunn, again, um, wasn't getting in the team enough. And I figured we need to try and bring in some youngsters. Um, players going out on loans, obviously Tim Prescott, uh, Prescott. A few players gone out to Chester. So Nathan Dodd has gone. Ashley Thorpe, Matthew Williams. Ah, so I had a friend called Matthew Williams. Um, Max Cotrain, uh, Cotrain. No. Yeah, Cotrain. Uh, Gary Max has gone to Eastley Morris Parkinson who some of you may have seen has also gone to Eastley uh, Carl Lacey has gone to Maidstone and Craig Rickard has gone to Dorchester um, so that's mainly this out so there's no money come in there we did have a couple of bids for uh, Mantum uh, we've actually we've had quite a few bids to be fair I think Sunderland offered us a, a million quid for Nathan Dodd but I'm really determined to hang on to these lads so let's just take a look at our free transfers as you can see we've abu not abused the loan system we have an affiliate agreement with Chelsea so we may as well actually bloody use it for once and we brought in three signings um, for the season and we've also got Kevin McAvoy uh, for a second season because Spurs would let us so we did it I couldn't afford to actually buy him outright which I may have to try and do at some point because he's bloody great so players we've brought in on free transfers first this is Arlen Birch um, he is a Welsh sort of right back he's not great yet but he does have a decent amount of potential obviously well, uh, well he's not actually that great but it was offered to me for like virtually nothing let's just get rid of season uh, it's uh, Steve Weaver that has it oh there we go sorry yeah I thought it was decent um, Weaver my actual yeah I can't remember what he actually does but the point is he's very very good at judging ability and potential and he reckons that Arlen Birch could be a quality player so it's good to have him on the, in the team Adam Webster can play it right back as well but it's good to have Arlen Birch as a sort of backup to Brendan Maloney but I'm still looking for potential someone to be in that position too next up is Yonatas Centino who I think is Portuguese um he's a winger in fact he plays just he's just a right-sided player but again good good player and that's yeah Steve Weaver what he reckons like he's not super good but he barely cost us anything and i just figured why not just get some like get some bodies in basically some backups and this is <laughs> i love this this is stathis zabaras who frankly sounds like a character from game of thrones and i enjoyed that more than anything else however he is again a left back so we're bringing in some strength there also he's worth nearly half a million quid and we signed him on a free transfer so he's got a fair bit of wages but this they reckon this lad again could be very very good um i mean look at that potential he's already not bad at left back and we've got him as a backup to raheem hanley and obviously nathan Aker. um so we're going to talk about these guys now so chelsea gave me my list of players that i could potentially uh loan from them and as usual i went through and had a little look at some of them and went after a couple usually they just say no or chelsea will agree and then the player will just be like get to fuck so but the fact is we're in the championship now so they're actually a little bit more uh, inclined to come towards us and we actually managed to get three of them which i think is the most we were allowed um so we'll take it so these are the three this is a regen this is ryan smith who is awesome um we're going to be playing him as a sort of advanced forward and he can play that role crazy well as well um let's just uh advance forward attack so dribbling isn't his strong suit and heading isn't awesome either but his finishing is 16 and i'm hoping that will really be excellent for us uh first touch is bad passing's decent off the ball is great anticipation composure lots of decent mental stats uh physicals balance is amazing um and his acceleration isn't awful either so that is good um he's more of a false nine type of player but we don't really play that style but the fact is he's still a bloody good advance forward um so he'll be good to have for the season just to give a bit of backup so nathan eccleston and marcus and dodd and those sort of players i think dodd's gone on loan also but yeah ryan smith very very young i don't know how old he is exactly but he's not exactly old as is the fact that he's a regen um so yeah he's coming also just total side note um raheem sterling has gone to manchester city in the summer for 47 and a half million quid i also looked on his page why in the hell has he got 15 pace 
He's got 19 acceleration, but 15 pace. I mean, I'm not sounding like a Liverpool fan here, but that uh, that's, yeah, 15 pace. That's a bit low for me. Have they seen him? Anyway, um, moving along. Uh, this is Nathan Aker. Now, a lot of you will probably know, especially if you're a Chelsea fan, will already know about Nathan Aker. He's been on the bench a few times for Chelsea this year. I don't know if he's actually played, but yeah. He's a defensive midfielder, and you might think, well, why are you going a defensive midfielder? Well, two reasons which I will show you in a sec. Firstly, we've got two new tactics this year. I've decided to build a plethora and we'll have three tactics and you'll understand why in a sec. But firstly, he can also play decent at centre-back uh, as a ball-playing defender, just in case Watmore gets injured, which is great. Um, and also, he's not bad at left-back either. So he'll be very, very useful cover for us. Um, yeah, and the, uh, the last one, uh, this is a signing I'm really pleased with. This is Charlie Musonda. Um, very few of you will know that much about him apart from obviously people that play fm quite a lot which was supposedly most of you probably most of you guys but basically like um chelsea fans might obviously know more about him obviously and anyone that watched the fa youth cup final last year it was on television i watched it of course because it was fulham versus chelsea it was a great series a uh, couple of games and musonda was excellent for chelsea when he came off the bench in that game and he has got some unbelievable stats so i think we play an attacking midfield i always forget set to attack finishing isn't brilliant that's one of the areas that you might be let down off the ball it isn't special but technically um his long shots are great first touch is excellent he's got decent dribbling passing isn't awful technique is great vision is good too which is very important for us he's got great determination as well which is good to see and his work rate is high so he certainly could improve quite a bit with us his agility is awesome um so i'm looking forward to having him on the team uh, he can play all over really and that's excellent so yeah excellent i may still be looking into some more players because we do have a bit more budget i'm just determined not to bring not to spend too much we've got 7k wage and we've got 700,000 transfer budget but a lot of that came from me adjusting the uh uh, you know the bonuses also um, we've got a couple of other players coming in so Bernard uh, Schmidt I believe is coming in and Julian Mallard um, uh, sorry <laughs> Maliard are both coming in in November they're youngsters again like 15 years old so again could be awesome um, as you can see that's us turning down the bids for Nathan Dodd now I, I may potentially go after some more players, but we I just don't want to exhaust our transfer budget because we may well need that for signing new contracts and stuff. We're going to be working for one of the smallest wage budgets in this league, there's no doubt. So we're really going to have to rely on our tactical ability this year. Um, and this is what we're going to be using. So our standard tactic is the same as it was last year, um, but we've made two new ones, basically. So this is, if we go behind in games and need to chase them, this is, the tactic is the same, except... Um, the idea here is that the instructions are slightly different. So it's more direct passing this time. Uh, it's basically a way of us getting the ball a bit further forward. That, that's the idea for this tactic. We've also changed the uh, player instructions for the tactics too. Uh, this is the one that really is different though. This is our, we've gone a goal up late on and need to defend tactic. This is where players like Aker will come in. We basically, it, it moves, changes some of the roles around a little bit, but the main thing it does is it moves our uh our boxer box midfielder back and puts him as an anchor man basically in front of the back four set to sort of go and little raise just to take the ball and clear these areas that's basically that also team shape for this one is structured the defense the mentality is defensive and the instructions obviously it's more like waste time be more disciplined oh we're not going to prevent we're going to yeah get that you see what i mean so that's basically our three tactics we're nearly fluid in all of them this one's not quite there yet so hopefully we won't have to use that immediately so that's the plan this year um, we're going to go into the match preview screen now, since I think we've pretty much covered everything. Um, so yeah, um, we'll take a little look at the lineup we're probably going to be using quite a bit this year. Uh, we had some preseason friendlies, of course. Uh, we beat Monaco Reserve 6-1, and then we beat Mole Valley 6-1, Bognor Regis 2-0, Gosport 3-0, Haven't and Water Louisville 3-0, Chester 1-0, and then we lost 4-0 to Chelsea. But, you know, it's just one of those things. So... Yeah, today we are at Hillsborough and playing against Sheffield Wednesday. And they've got some decent players. That's Danny Graham up front. James McLean. Is that Lewis Buxton? Kieran Westwood. Glenn Leuvens. David Wheater. Is that Chris Chris Martin? Yep. Coldplay Singer on the right-hand side. And a guy I, I don't recognise any of their names. Apologies. I'm not fluent in Sheffield Wednesday players. So... We're going to be playing this standard, our standard tactic for this one, but then we can adjust things as and when. So, for example, we might actually start with this tactic away from home in really tough games, if I feel that we might be up against it. So, against big sides in this league. So, for example, Aston Villa are in this league, West Ham. We could be up against some big sides this year. Um, so, yeah, let's just do a quick pick and see what that brings us out. So, again, Ryan Smith is preferred up front to our sort of... But look at that bench. 
it looks better. I actually did give Gary Gardner a new contract, simply because he was back from injury, and I figured, why the hell not? He still has a lot of potential, and the fans were actually getting really on my back about not offering him a new contract, so I figured, let's just go for it. I think this is a decent team. I mean, Smith, Masonda, Wallace, Griffiths, Close, Aker, Watmore, Webster, Maloney, Jones, who's declining quite a bit, so Alex Bass is almost certainly going to take over at some point this season. McAvoy there. But the bench, you know, Hyam, Mantum, Marcus, Hanley, Rakawamwe, and Eccleston. I'm really happy. And then we've even got decent reserves for those and some great youngsters, so I'm really happy with the way things are. So, with that in mind... Um, I'm just going to quickly sort out our training as well because we've been on tactics for a while now. We're nearly fluid in that. So I'm just going to quickly nip into our uh, training here and just take it off of that and put it on Team Cohesion for a little bit um, just so that we can get more into that. And I'm also going to move this to uh, Teamwork just for now. Uh, we can adjust that as and when, but I just wanted to really blend up. Yep. And that's obviously close and Griffiths. Um, Griffiths obviously can play further back and actually prefers to. So maybe it's not such a bad thing. I really want to see if the likes of Masonda, which is starting all three of our new Chelsea signing, uh, Chelsea loan players. So I'm hoping that they can come up with something special today. And these guys could be the difference between us staying up and going down. I should also point out that our uh, season objective as set by the board is to, well, it was to, it's, a, it's to avoid relegation, basically. Sorry, I'm just moving a couple of things around here. Um, yeah, so it's to avoid relegation. I thought it might be something like fight bravely against relegation, but apparently not. We are expected to survive, and I really hope that we can do. So this is Sylvan Distant. I've turned off my team instructions, and I've decided to let Sylvan Distant take a little crack at it. Because apparently, yeah, that's what you could be... That's a good idea. Um, so yeah, he's our new uh, assistant manager just because he's so good at tactics, like 19 and 17 for his tactical stats. He's awesome for that. And I'm hoping that th that will give us a little bit of an edge in some games. Um, yeah, and we're slowly, I'm building up some other signings for the staff. I I've kept a lot of them, but I got rid of a few of the scouts because I wanted to bring in some slightly better ones now that we're at a higher level, maybe with a more wide range of scouting as we are allowed to scout all of Europe. Um, right, let's get into this game. Oh God, if we can come up with something even if we if we can just avoid losing here at Sheffield Wednesday on the opening day, I'd be over the moon with the performance if we could do that. But only time will tell if we're actually capable of doing it. It is an away game, and obviously we were a little bit struggling on the road last season in away games, so who knows what will happen for us today. As long as we don't get our asses handed to us, then I'll be happy. That's a good tackle, and Nathan Aker can bring the ball away here. Can he find a decent pass, though? He can. Drops it into Ben Close. Can he look long? Ooh, knocks it over the top there, and Masonda's not going to win that, though, and it comes down to Buxton. And it's back to Kieran Westwood. But, you know, we looked all right on the break there. This sort of tactic probably could work quite well on the on the road if we can play it right. Oh, don't get that ball all the way through. And it's back to Lee, but he could still put a decent pass in here. Helen, or Halen, uh, knocks it up to Martin. Martin's going to look into the channel here. Back to Lee, he's got a long ranger. He's got a long range effort here. Mac, oh my, oh, what a block. Um, oh, okay. It looked like that deflected, but okay, we'll take it. Wednesday look quite strong, I've got to say. Um, our first home game, by the way, guys, is against Bradford City. Um, so that is... Um, imminently winnable game you'd have to say um but they've managed to survive at this level for a couple of years now so maybe it won't be that easy um tell you what Sheffield Wednesday look pretty damn good um I think we could be backs against the wall here they're passing the ball around really really well but we're not allowing ourselves to get dragged out of position here and again I think we may have a lot of this to deal with today uh Palace already tuna Andy Vyman plays for Palace now um oh hang on here we go here's a chance maybe our best chance here to get something from this oh decent hit Decent header there from Adam Webster. Maybe he could have done better. I've actually seen him uh, play better than that. Well, he scored. Look at the amount of goals he got for us last season. Heck, I'd take a nil-nil here if we could get one. That'd be awesome. Keeping a clean sheet would be surprising. Costas Petroglis still at Fulham. Masonda's ball in and it's cleared away. And I'll tell you what, we could be under huge pressure here. And that just intercept it. Oh. Um, going to get up anytime soon. Christ, how long did the defender take to get up there? And McClenny whips it back across Maloney. And that is, oh, well saved. Okay, fair play. Well done, Paul Jones. That was a terrible finish from the Sheffield Wednesday attacker. He should have put that away. We're definitely under the cosh here, um, but we're not losing. And until we are, I'm quite happy with the way things are going because this strategy is the one we've trained the most for and I don't want to just abandon it immediately. And McElhenney, and that's again, that's a really poor header from him. Are we actually going to keep that ball in play? No. Still, there's been a lot of highlights so far, and it's mostly been Sheffield Wednesday, apart from that one header from Adam Webster. So, hmm, I worry about us a little bit here. I think we're going to need to bide our time and take our chances in this league. It's all going to be about survival this season. That is the key for us. It's just surviving. Pick up wins where we can, and Wednesday are taking a lot of pot shots from range. That has to be said. 
Just trying to see if there's a way. Are we? Oh, hang on a minute. I think I know what's wrong. Yeah, we're on extended highlights because of the uh, playoff final. <laughs> I did wonder why that wasn't quite as obvious. The chances seemed a little bit long range and not really that close. Right, okay, so we've not been great. We've not really created much. So I'm tempted in the second half to just give our second tactic a little tryout. It's basically the same, except it change, changes some of the passing a little bit. Um, so we're going to do that now, actually. We're going to hit into tactics. And we're going to switch to our direct system. And it basically isn't any different, um, with the exception of some of the instructions. It's that literally it. We also want sort of, uh, yeah. Although I don't want to close. Yeah, I do still want to drop deep. I don't want to be too over the top. Because I just feel like we need something a little bit of a different um, dimension to our game at the moment. We need maybe getting some balls up to Smith. Although I don't really think he's that kind of striker, unfortunately. We've not really seen anything from him in this game, um, the youngster. So maybe we will need a bit more experience coming off the bench later in this game. Because Smith has not really done anything of note in this one yet. I mean, he's not had many chances, as far as I can tell. He needs to get his ass back on side for a start. It's Misonda here. He's probably going to lose it here. No, knocks into Griffiths. Smith. Is there an outlet here? Smith drops it all the way back to Griffiths. Out to Brendan Maloney. This guy can cross like crazy. Maloney. Oh, into Wallace. Knocks it across the box. Smith! Oh, good chance from Pompey. Better. Better there. And Smith, well, nearly had his chance for a first goal. I'm just going to remove this because there's no need to keep a league table up here at the moment so early in the season. Just don't lose the ball here. Thank you. Masonda first to the rebound. So, well, we've one clear-cut chance apiece, you know. And I tell you what, we're actually looking a lot better. Bloody hell. We're creating a lot more chances in this second period. Just from going a bit more um a bit more long ball, I guess. So what can we do to I'm gonna have to bring on um I'm gonna say Eccleston here, just because. Um I'm also thinking Mantum to come on for Masonda, because he's not really feeling it at the moment. And I think we'll just leave it at that for now. And Paul Jones has been booked how? Time wasting or something? It's not part of my tactic. Anyway, we're actually having some decent opportunities now. I've got to say, this uh, tactic seems to work quite well as far as creating shots and chances, but at the moment, we're not really creating anything of note. And that's the problem for us. And uh-oh. Don't concede from a fucking corner. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Normal service has resumed, and we're still conceding from corners. <laughs> We do need to, actually, I'll tell you what we need to do. We need to put things back on defending set-piece training because that seems to be the only way you can stop them from scoring from them is to just constantly have that trained. Um, so that's a shame because I think we've actually been quite decent today. And that's really disappointing. Stobbs this ball in and just Griffiths clears it and, well, smacked back in by Corey. I mean, should have done better with the clearance there, Griffiths. Uh, that's poor defending from our point of view, right? And in that case, we're going to have to throw off the counter-attacking shackles here and just go for overload for the last 10 minutes because why the hell not? See what we can come up with. Bradford are 3-0 up against Sheffield United, so clearly they are no pushovers in this league. I mean, look, we've hit the target quite regularly in this game, it seems. We just haven't been able to find the net, and it's a shame. And I don't think we're going to find the net, and I think we're going to start off the season with a... Ooh, actually, 50 seconds. I'd say that's enough for a proper highlight. If Mantum could get first to this ball... Come on, Mantum. There we go. Back out to Jay Wallace. Come on, whip it in. Something awesome. Oh, that better not be the damn highlight. Oh, it's probably going to be them going out the other end scoring, isn't it? Oh, Jack Watt does help. Oh. I think we are still going to lose this one. It's a shame, and I think we've done all right, really. Just been... Our defending of that set piece is what's cost us here. So we're definitely going to be going on set piece training after this game, that's for sure. Yeah, 10 seconds left, and I think that's going to be it for us here at Hillsborough, which is a shame. But... We live and learn. We've not been bad, considering it's our first game at this level, um, for a while. And there we have it. Sheffield Wednesday 1, Portsmouth thing. Oh, I don't believe it. Well, we did a bloody good job. It's just that one little lapse in concentration. It wasn't even that. Just a poor clearance from Kieran Griffiths has cost us that one. We should have scored. I mean, obviously these chances weren't particularly great. Otherwise, we would have seen highlights of them. So there we have it, guys. Um, we've got Newport County in the Capital One Cup next, but that is obviously not a game we will be highlighting. Um, I'll just uh, probably put out a weak inside against Newport. I'm not really that bothered about the Capital One Cup. Um, let's just quickly... Well, we're certainly not going to be the relegation zone. We're 19th. We only lost 1-0. We weren't bad, but we do need to find a way to score some goals, and maybe we will do that in the future. Um, so let's see what the game we will be doing as the... Right, so it's actually... Oh, my God. West Brom um, is the game away at the Hawthorns 
that we will be doing is the uh, live com in the next episode. We've got before that though. We've got Newport County in the cup and Bradford City and Leeds. Of course, if we did beat Newport, you might find that the, the uh, highlighted episode. Sorry, not highlight episode. The live con might actually be the second round of the cup because it might come in just after this. So it's either going to be West Brom or if we go through against Newport, the second round of the Capital One Cup um, will be the highlighted game. So, yeah, it's a shame. It's not the way I would have liked things to have started, but it's one of those things that just happens. So if you guys are like what you've seen in this episode, please feel free to drop a like on it. And if you'd like to even more than that, please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more awesome stuff like this in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8. And I will see you guys in the next episode for either the West Brom game or whoever we would draw in the Capital One Cup if we get through against Bukati. So I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye. <laughs>